everyone, my name is James Henderson and I work in the PlayStation Toolchain team and I'm going to be giving this talk on dead debug data elimination using Fragmented Dwarf. Now what's the problem we're trying to solve here? Well here we have an example object file and this is an ELF object, although the principle we talk about throughout this talk should apply to other file formats too. And in this ELF we have three functions as well as some dwarf that, for example, this debug info section. This dwarf might reference the test functions, the relocations, and then these functions might actually be split up into the lone independent sections using f function sections. Note that the debug info is not split up in any way. And a similar thing might happen if you're using contacts, for example. Why the splitting of the sections good? Well, it allows the linker to do TC sections to remove the excess sections if they aren't referenced. And that the dwarf does not inhibit section removal and because it's one, one big blob, it also doesn't get any, have any bits removed. So what is fragmenting dwarf? Well, fragmenting dwarf is an approach that allows to remove the excess debug data. Here we have an example of debug info section with generic bits like compile units and more function specific bits like this subprogram. The subprogram is dwarf terminology for function. We fragment it by splitting it up into those bits, the bits that are generic, and the bits that are for specific functions. And then we link these bits that are for specific functions to their corresponding text section. And that means when you remove the text section, the linker knows to remove the debug info section. It's able to finally to concatenate them back together again using its standard approach. The result is a smaller dwarf with no dead references. And this approach allows us to reduce the size of debug line, debug info, debug A ranges, and so on. Although there are some sections in the dwarf which we can't simplify in this way due to their structure, for example, use of entry indexes. It also doesn't get rid of all useless information, for example, it doesn't get rid of the empty namespace tags and unused web entries. And the intermediate objects are not valid dwarf, though we could teach customers how to be how to read them. So what's the output size like? Well, here we have an example large game package, which we fragmented using a Python script and compared it to a regular version of that same package. And even when there's no GCing, we see a 10%-ish improvement in the dwarf size. And that's because the dwarf for discarded combats is now able to be thrown away. And a similar thing happens throughout the, as we do more and more GCing. For example, here where we've done the most GCing, we've got a size of about 80% improvement. Just to note, when we say GC aggressiveness, what I mean is that we've I've artificially ignored some of the relocations when doing lifeless analysis, which allows us to treat more sections as dead and therefore simulate game code bases with fewer functions that are actually referenced. Um, the link time performance tells a slightly different story, and it's about 2.3 to 2.4 times slower when there's no GC sections enabled. And even when we do enable GC sections, it's still a similar issue even though the issue is slightly better at the later levels of aggressiveness. There are some caveats to this as well. We have used a shift link order in our script. However, in practice, this isn't actually going to work, probably because it requires too many LD patches and it's illegal according to the ABI. We could have used group sections to do it as, instead. And the figures also include an LD patch to improve performance, that's to reduce the amount of string comparisons, and it's not clear that this is quite correct for all objects when it's further investigation. The alternative solutions to this approach, we could, for example, completely rewrite the dwarf link time. And this is partially what the Sasoni linker did for the debug line section, and Alexi Lapchin has similarly investigated it within LLD. However, these approaches are slow. For example, Alexi's approach was eight times slower, and they're not particularly within LLDs or a general linker's feature set. So we could do it post-link to remove that last issue, however it's still going to be slow and it wastes I.O. additionally. We could also try changing the dwarf structure in a new standard, however this doesn't solve the issue for existing standards. In conclusion then, we could fragment the sections, but this adds overhead at link time due to the extra cost of creating input sections within LLD. On the other hand, it does provide a big size saving bonus potentially, which in turn should help improve the debugger load times. So our future work will be to investigate that in load time improvement and also to fix the caveats we talked about earlier and add additional patches and implement scripts in MC. Thank you.